we're going to take a look here at chemical equilibrium. And equilibrium is a chemical system in which the rate of the forward reaction equals the re rate of the reverse reaction. And the net concentrations of all species do not change. And so we're going to see something new in our reactions here. We've only seen these forward arrows so far. But in an equilibrium reaction, we can go both forwards and backwards. Um, and so usually these reactions have a relatively small activation energy, so you can go forward and backward and forward and backward. And these are really important um, in helping us maintain homeostasis and adjust to changes in our environment. So um, one other thing to think about with this equilibrium is it's going to be dynamic. Um, dynamic like a full parking lot. For example, our parking lots at the college um, stay full all day, but it's not the same exact people in them all day. As soon as someone leaves, someone comes in. And so it's dynamic, it's changing and yet staying the same. Um, the cars in the lot are changing and yet it's staying at this full state. So at equilibrium, um, another way that we could say we're at equilibrium is we have some kind of balance. And I'm gonna use a, um, an analogy here to get us started that at least makes sense to my life. Um, so my life is a balance between work and rest, right? And rest might be sleep or laughing or friends or food or whatever. So I can only work so much and then I need to go rest and then I rest and I'm ready to go work. So if I take on a lot of work, school, job, family, whatever, um, if I've been working a lot, then to get back to balance in my life, I need to go rest. So doing a lot of work, I need to go compensate by resting. And I could say that I need to shift right, I need to move this way, or I need to rest. Once I've rested, then I'm like, cool, let's take on the world. Um, what am I ready to do with all of that rest? Well, now I've rested enough, I'm ready to go get back to work. And so I could put some words on that. I could say that I shift left and I'm ready to go work. And so it's kind of a cycle. It's kind of a one dimensional cycle here. Um, let's say you lose sleep, okay? You're sick, your roommate's being loud, whatever. Um, so if I'm losing sleep, then I'm thinking I need to replenish that sleep. And I would do that by shifting to the right. So I would say, let me shift my life so that I'm resting a little bit to make up for that sleep that I've been losing. All right, so we've got this constant changes in life, but you just adjust and adjust and adjust back and forth. So we could look at something in our bodies um, that goes with that. And in chemistry, we call this Le Chatelier's principle. If a chemical system at equilibrium is disturbed or stressed, the system will react in the direction that counteracts the disturbance or relieves the stress, which is just a wordy way of saying if you work a lot, you need to rest, and if you rest a lot, you're ready to work. So you adjust to um, whatever the conditions are. So here this HB is just short for hemoglobin, which is in our red blood cells. And our hemoglobin um, picks up oxygen, travels through our blood, and then it gets to our tissues and it releases the oxygen. So we don't want it to be a one-way street. We need it to be equilibrium where I can pick up oxygen and then I can let go of oxygen. So let's kind of use our Le Chatelier's shifting idea up here. Let's say I add oxygen. So I start breathing in 100% oxygen instead of the 21% that's in the air right now. So if I add oxygen, which way am I gonna shift? Now I have too much over here, too much work, I shifted right to rest, too much oxygen or more than I'm used to, I'm gonna shift over to the right. And I could say as I shift right, I'm going to make more of that hemoglobin oxygen complex. In contrast, what if I remove oxygen? Okay, so I don't have that now, kinda like where I removed the rest earlier, I lost sleep. If I remove oxygen, say I go to high altitude, then my equilibrium needs to replace it. So I'm gonna shift over here to the left to replace that oxygen that I lost. Final thing to think about, what if I add hemoglobin? So if you live at high altitude, your body makes more red blood cells after a couple of weeks. Um, so if I add hemoglobin, now I have more of this 
and that's going to force me to get back to balance. I need to take a lot of this and convert some of it into that hemoglobin oxygen. So I could say that I shift right and I make more hemoglobin oxygen. When you live at altitude, um, you want more hemoglobin because this is how I carry oxygen around. And if you don't have enough hemoglobin, you can't carry oxygen around and you end up feeling dizzy, tired, out of breath. So once you have more hemoglobin, you're able to carry more oxygen around in your blood and you don't feel quite so um, affected by the altitude. So let's go ahead and look at another example of this chemical equilibrium um, and applying Le Chatelier's principle to adjust to these stresses. So here's a reaction. Um, and you're going to answer two questions for um, each of these conditions. During the stress, which direction will the reaction shift, right or left, to undo that stress? And then as a result of that shift, will we form more products or will we form more reactants? So same thing we did on the last slide. So if I add carbon monoxide, or another way you'll see this written is this brackets, increase brackets of carbon monoxide, and that just means concentration of CO is what that bracket means. Um, let's go up here. How would my reaction shift? So if I add a lot of CO and I say, oh, I've been working too much, I need to rest. I have too much CO, I need to convert some into that other product there. Um, and so I would shift right to undo that stress. And when I shift right, I'm going to make more products. Um, carbon dioxide. All right, if I add carbon dioxide, so I'm adding carbon dioxide, then I have too much on the right side, I need to shift to the left to use some of that up. And so when I shift left, I always make more reactants. Let's think about removal. That takes a little bit more thought. So if I remove CO, if I take the CO and I remove a bunch of it, it's like when we lost sleep, we need to replace it. So if I lose this, I need to shift so I can replace it. Um, so I'm going to say I shift left to replace what I lost, and that gives me more reactants. Finally, removing CO2, so if I remove this, I need to replace it. So I'm going to shift right to replace it and I'm going to make more products. So hopefully you're getting the hang of the patterns here. Um, I'll leave this one here for you to practice on your own.